Hello and welcome everyone to Young at Heart, session number 152. I'm Father James DeLucio of the Paulist Fathers, ready to offer you nursery rhymes, stories, songs, poems, mother goose, Aesop's fables, Lerus Carol, limericks, larks, and other things to keep us all young at heart. Continuing with our exploration of African-American folktales, I have part one of a fascinating story called A Vital Decision. You've already heard some stories in which they leave an open-ended question uh, that you have to answer and debate what is right or what is wrong, who should do this or that. This one also, but the first half I find is most delightful. Uh, the second half I will offer tomorrow when it poses the difficult decision. The first half has echoes of many different stories. So I hope that you will place in the commentary your own musings on which other stories this story sounds like. And there are several. I will share my uh, views for my first reading of the story. It made me think of, oh, and then I thought of, and then I thought, so hopefully you'll have the same thing. This is that wonderful intersection, cross section of things that we see that no matter what our culture, we have so much in common with people everywhere. And that's how God made us too. Yes. Once there lived a poor man who had three sons and three daughters. He managed to eke out a living by catching rats and selling them as food at the market. In the city, there lived a rich man with 400 slaves and many wives. He had no children. People used to torment him by asking, who is going to inherit your fortune? One day, even the king asked him that question. The man replied, I have a son, but he is living in the woods. I am going to give him my daughter as his wife, the king replied and I will try to find my son, said the rich man. A few clarifications already. When we're talking about African civilization, like the ancient Hebrew civilization, they had slaves, but nothing, nothing, nothing like the European and American slave trade. Nope, nope, nothing. Usually it was captives after a particular fight or tribal warfare. And from what I'm told, they were able to earn their freedom and weren't treated half so badly as here in these United States. So this story may go that far back, like biblical times. We don't know, but are you set for, there's already some similarities here. Let's see <clears throat> what you come up with. Now, the rich man had 200 men, but he ordered them to stay where they were, for he alone would go into the forest. Now, meanwhile, that very day, the poor man left home with his sons to catch the rats. And he told them, if any of you let one rat escape, I will kill you. The sons dug around in the ground where the rats were living, and suddenly out jumped a rat, and the youngest of the boys tried, but couldn't catch it. The father was infuriated, and he took an axe, and he struck his son with it. Blood poured out of the young man's wounds, and he collapsed. Leave him there, the father said. He is no longer one of us. They left. 
and before long, the rich man came riding by. He saw the boy, got down off of his horse, and cleaned the boy's wounds. Since he liked the boy's looks, he dressed him up in beautiful clothing and let him ride on the horse instead. When they came to the next village, the rich man sent messengers to his commander at home and asked him to send all his men along with another horse, for his son has been found. Drummers welcomed the rich man back home, and the people shouted, The rich man has found his son! The rich man has found his son! The rich man let his son march at the front with all the men, and the drummers drummed now for the son alone. The young man was greeted by the king. And then he was escorted to the rich man's living quarters, and he was given a beautiful house to live in. Three young slaves came to bathe him and massage his limbs. The rich man, who is now his father, sent him fifty slaves along with horses and everything that he could possibly need. The entire city celebrated the discovery of the rich man's son. Before long, the king sent over his daughter with her slaves. The young woman went to see this rich young man. She sat down next to him, and the two amused themselves for a while, but the son had no idea of what he was supposed to do. But after three days, he married the young woman, the princess, and the entire city celebrated, and before long, the young man had become, next to the king, the most beloved and most powerful man in the kingdom. And we'll stop there. Isn't that a delightful story? But it's only part one, and it gets kind of disturbing when part two comes along. But never mind that. Tomorrow, as Jesus says, tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. Rejoice in this wonderful part of the story. It could even end here, if you like. You can skip tomorrow if you want. <laughs> now, there's lots of stories that this should remind you of. I hope you will type in some of your comments as we go along. Meanwhile, if you go out this evening, be sure to wear your mask, keep safe, and what else? What else? Keep safe, wear your mask, stay healthy, and God bless. Have a good night, everyone. Bye now.